Okay, today we're going to be talking about attacking plays in a 3-2-2-3-1 box formation. We're going to be discussing how to attack from a wide aspect, narrow, counter and a switch play. So, as you can see, we're set up here with our back line of three, our midfield box, our two wingers and our striker. Now, I think the first thing to kind of explain is these two players here their importance within the build-up and the kind of dropping out of attacking scenarios. So one of them, you want to essentially play as a free eight. Now, by free eight, I mean a player that is not afraid to use his line here, as well as dropping into the centre, coming out wide to assist here, pushing up into the half space and playing as a second striker. This person who is playing this position will have a lot more freedom across the pitch to manoeuvre in, manoeuvre out, ask the ball at the feet, take the ball up, look to make the through passes into the uh, striker who's in on goal. But ultimately, they'll have a more attacking prowess than this person, but at the same time, be able to hold their own within the pitch. So you want to use somebody here who has a good sense of attacking direction, a good sense of passing, a good sense of dribbling. Those are the, probably the three main aspects that you want from a player like this. Now, with your other player, they're going to be a more traditional cam, but at the same time, when switching back from attack, I will explain in a later video how they're going to then reinforce the defensive line and help out that way. But essentially, the most important thing with this is, is this player allowing for not only your CDMs behind, but also the wingers out wide and the attacker ahead, uh, and passing option and an option where they can then run looking for that pass from him. So let me get rid of that for now. So that's that explained. So now you know the difference and the importance of this player here. I mean, you can, you know, you can use it on the opposite side. There's no, there's nothing stopping you from using it on the opposite side. Just as a personal preference for myself, I like it coming from this angle here because of the way my team is set up. Um, the players that I have on this side, on the right hand side here, just kind of work better with this setup here. Right. Now, if we're talking wide aspect, let's let's cover the wide aspect first. So we're talking about wide aspect here. Now, by wide, essentially, straight away, you're going to understand that this lane here and this lane here are going to be key elements in this wide play. Now, let's say we have our right wing here. Majority of the time, if the ball is in a position where we can push it out this way, so if the ball is within anywhere within this sort of half region here, I would like this player at all times to be sitting out wide giving the option for this player then to always be tucked, this defender to be tucked and kind of everybody tuck in slightly here. So if this player is out wide here and let's say, you know, you know the, ball, the ball is in this position here, just for reference sake, he'd be out wide here, he'd look to come wide. Then you've got this much space here because ultimately what happens is, is if you've got a centre back and um, left back pairing from the opposition, by dragging this player wide, if he follows, then this centre-back is going to have to worry, now worry about you've got the striker in here and you've got the cam acting as a second striker here. It's going to be too much of a difficult job for him to cover the back line pass here. So if, if a ball is played, you know, from here across into here, you have this running option here because of the space that you have here. And even if, you know, he starts to move wide and gets dragged here again, then you've just got the same issue here with a through pass into him here. So you can see already how playing out wide sort of limits the opposition uh, with what they can do and how they can kind of defend you. But it gives you more options to then um, be able to expose them and expose their lines. Actually, let me put him back in here because now I'm going to talk about, let's say then, you know, the other team decides not to press this man here. What, what would happen then if the ball is here? Essentially, the first thing that I would look for with my team and how I would want them to play from this scenario is if the ball is here, I'd look for that first pass to come out wide here. Now, from here, straight away, this is this is now this player here, I mean, is now going to close that gap. Why? Because the ball is played there. This is a dangerous position for them. They're going to want to uh, shift their team line and their whole back line will want to shift over. So you, you, you might have a back four that's now set up looking more like this here so their back line shifts down uh, they want to cover they want to cover this player here they want to cover a gap here the striker and then they want to cover this leaving him exposed from this position if you have 
that winger that is comfortable in one-on-ones who can potentially go past here, then great, go for it. If not, you want to start using um, an, your, your, your defender here to push up, to provide that extra support here, outnumber the player, because then they can pass and move, eventually will get around, bringing him with them. Now, from here, if this player does a, uh, get ahead of this man, what might happen is that this centre-back here will look to try and close him down to prevent him getting into the box. Now, it's very important that this player looks to occupy the half space. The half space is such a crucial element in the whole attacking build-up of this formation. In the game today, the half spaces is being using is being used fundamentally more. I think there's something ridiculous of Man City having this like a 50 plus percent uh, conversion rate when in the half space, which is you know ob obscene in the grand scheme of things. So, if this player can come here, so let's say now we've got the path of the ball, the ball is lying here instead of here. From here, your wide man would always look to tuck in into the op uh, opposing half space. Your striker will occupy the six yard area, anywhere within the six yard area, making this defender very wary of him. And you have your other um, attacking midfielder either looking to get into the box or given the scenario, if there's more space, if this player's moved here, just occupy anything out here. If any loose ball, then bang. So from here, we can go straight into the half space here if need be. From here, either we can go to goal. Great. If, if that's if the opportunity arises for him to shoot. If the ball's played to here, he's sort of covering uh, the shot line here. Again, we can just play that ball across here and then from here it can go in. Great. From here, if we can push as wide as possible, what we can look to do is play that low driven ball from the half space into the attacker and then he can put it in the back of the net. And then if need be, if we've played that ball now, you know, let me get rid of these lines so I'm not confusing you. Let me just quickly get rid, get rid of a few of these lines. Uh because now I want to say if this gets closed down here. So again, so now if we're here again with the ball and they've set up more like this, so they've overloaded the half space to really try and take out this strike, uh, sorry, the, the central space to take out this striker. From here, if the ball comes here and he comes down here, we can play up here. If he comes in here and then we, we can just have this person who's here and then play it across and then in the back of the net. So you can see how many different areas are. You can either go, one, which is just straight into the box, two, which is from here to here, three, which is from here to here to here, four, which is from here to here to here to here, five, which is from here to here to here, all the way around the back to there. So it's, it's such a deadly um, option to get here. And that's without even including the CDMs. Now, if you have if you have CDMs that can, you know, I like, you know, the, the sort of Rodri, Sergio Busquets S that can pop a ball out from outside of the box in, then again, you just have another... You just have another um, avenue of attacking because if that ball comes here then you can play even further out wide here or even from here to here and just a little layoff. So if the ball goes from here to here and then he sends it here, all he's got to do is just a little layoff here. First time, bang. If you have that kind of quality in your team, then I think you should go for it. That's a brilliant aspect to have. And that is wide play. And that's how I would love my team to set up in wide play. I mean, every coach is different. Every coach has different ideologies, but I've purely... Um, I'm a big, big believer of how important the half space is and how much the half space can not only benefit your attack, but can also um, hinder the, uh, I guess, hinder the opposition's defence as well. It just gives too many different avenues for them to worry about and too many sort of options for you that you should never be in a position where, you know, you as a coach are looking at your team like, oh, why was nobody free? Because there should always be someone or some sort of, um direction that they can take that will find a man so let's reset this now so that is the wide play done let me just grab another one from here so that is the wide play done let's reset this back into our box formation let me just reset here and then bring him here let me just bring this into here so this is now talking about our wide have i, have I done that right oh, oh no i've got one extra my bad yeah so again now let's talk about narrow play. So building up through the central part of the pitch and utilizing these three men here, because these three will be a, you know, a major issue in a triangle pressing down the central uh, area of the pitch. So first things first, I think what I should talk about is when pressing narrow, 
you definitely still want to use your wide men as sort of ghost targets. You want them to create dummy runs, create um, kind of fake scenarios for oppositions to worry about. Because if you have a back line, uh, if you're sorry, if your opponent has a back line, a back four, the traditional back four, then if these guys are just staying out wide and they've noticed that the ball is in this area then they just might start to tuck in a little bit and you know kind of put more pressure in the central part of the pitch which is then going to hurt you so what you would want is you would want attackers looking to make those runs as if they were being inverted just to give that fullback that kind of um uncertainty that is a ball going to go from here to here if it is i need to be prepared so what that in might entail is him pulling out a bit wide creating this space here for this player to move into and if that happens then you're going to look for this this sort of movement from the opposition here and from here when you've got another man that can look into running behind here so now imagine we have a ball in this position he was you know he was moving ahead here he comes down here and then the whole back line kind of shifts from here we can go to here to here if that space opens great if not by the time this transition's happening this player should have identified that him from here will then lead to here so he can get a run in. So when the ball eventually gets here, it will just be played to him in that half space and he can go for a shot near post. Or if he's got the um, finesse, he can go around the keeper there. So that's a great way to build up narrower and still be able to use your wingers. Otherwise, building up narrow with, with these sort of players here, you need to have that kind of belief in your players and know that they have that strength about them to take players on sometimes in 1v1s. If you watch back to the um, the season just gone, the 2022-2023 season, there's a point where Kevin De Bruyne picks up the ball against Arsenal. And, you know, I think he's got like three men around him here. He picks up the ball. You have Haaland running in, but De Bruyne has it in him to kind of take, take on these men, run through, get to about this area here and play a ball into the bottom corner. Now, obviously, that's somebody who's, you know, generational. He's a world-class player. But... It's nice knowing that you have certain players like this, even at those levels, even lower levels. You know, there are players that are capable of doing this against these lower end oppositions. So you can have either this player or this player take them on and look to play those balls into the bottom corners. Those are going to be vital. It's not about smacking it as hard as you can at the keeper. It's about kind of using the corners of the goal and really emphasising, trying to get it as close to the post as possible to make it difficult for the keeper. Now, another thing that we can do here when building up narrow is if we take out the wingers now, let's say they're not a part of this attack and we just want to use these five in the middle here. You've got to remember instantly is you can press a back five into a back four, either through narrow or wide. For this sake, I'm going to say it's a narrow one. So you want your striker straight away backing into a defender and making him uh, his marking man. So that's that done there. You could then do the exact same with your free eight. He makes it into a marking man. And now, all of a sudden, when you when you pose up like this, you now have man for man here, you have man for man here, and you have an extra man here. Now, this extra man can play as a, um, a sort of target man in the sense where the ball comes to him, he looks to play off again. So if the ball's here with him, he looks to play to the striker, running in, play there. Because now it's, it's too much for the opposition to deal with. Whenever you're in a higher numbered base, against opposition it's very difficult for the opposition to kind of always be on you always be marking you even if you throw in the dms here just being able to push them so far up is so great for you because you're always in a dangerous position you're in their third you're pressing their uh, penalty area their goal for them it's they want to stop the shot coming off they're not going to be able to identify each player especially when one person already has one man on them if a second one comes in is going to be a lack of communication here and a lack of awareness for this player that they can stop a run in from him to get in behind the goal. So you would want to build up from the middle. You would want to build up with that, um, uh, with those four in the middle here, with the striker again, straight pressing into the centre-back, the other cam into the centre-back, and then the other three kind of free-flowing between them, interchanging positions. And again, if you want to use the wingers for the exact same scenario, this winger comes in narrow, takes on a man here. This winger comes in narrow, takes on a man here. Then the striker can take on a man and whichever cam is available, they can take on a man. And now you have your free man here. So now you have your five and against four with a, with a free man who's able to, you know, play a ball off, running through the middle 
or if the striker's making a dummy run and then this defender gets dragged here, it just opens up areas for him to move in and part, uh, shoot. Sorry. But even if, you know, the striker gets away from his man, he's coming and he's now occupied him. Again, a ball comes in for the striker and then he can shoot. So that's a narrow play. Again, pretty, it's pretty straightforward, but as long as you know how to use your numbers, then that's perfect. That's how you would want to do it. Now, with this formation, counterplay is... I would describe it as very fluid in the sense of counterplay. So if, if, if we push everything back slightly and we're in a position where we've just kind of turned over possession, everybody's looking to press up. I personally, how I would want my team to structure it would be if the ball is with any of the centre backs, you know, let's, let's just say this one here on the right side. I would instantly want him to look to play a ball out wide to my winger to start an attack from wide because I prefer this formation to attack from wide going around into the half space. So straight away from wide, we've turned over possession, the ball goes out wide, instantly you have the threat of this player here looking to become a second striker, looking to run in and up towards the half space. So then a, potentially a ball can get played around here for him to run onto, striker in the middle, he's coming around the back, he's posting up here, and then from here you've got three options, where do you want to play the ball, or even a fourth just shoot. So that's that. And... You know, just for reference, whenever this ball is played here, this player should instantly look to become that player there. OK, or given if they're overloading on this side and you see there's more numbers here, then perhaps come here just for that short option. And then we can start pushing our DMs up. So then that way, when the ball, if it's held up here a little bit, we slowed down the, uh, the play a little bit with allowing these players to come up. Now it's, you know, we've got those more options here where the ball can come from here out wide in looking to go across, cutting it back, however you want to do it. That's how I think that this should be done. Again, like I said, every coach might want to play it a little bit differently, depends on their ideologies, which is totally fine. But counterplay for me would always be from when we've just broken um, an attack down from the opposition and we look to counteract, I'd always look for that ball out wide and then forward. If it's a very strong attack, so let's say it's now from a corner where they've got majority of their men up here, they might have two or three at the back here. If a long ball can be played over into the striker, as long as you have a competent striker who's able to run in and press that back line, go for it. I mean, if you're blessed to have that type of striker, then, you know, it's a brilliant thing to have. I mean, look at how City are using Haaland. You would never, you know, you've never known Pep to just ping a ball up and allow the striker to run onto it. But now he's in a position where he has that quality up front. So it's, you know, it's kind of just feed the ball to Haaland, feed the ball to the striker, allow him to run in, allow him to be a problem. But then at the same time, if you watch it, even when Haaland's going, he has the backing of De Bruyne, Gundogan, he has Grealish coming, he has Bernardo Silva coming as well. So you can't just let your striker go by himself and expect him to put the ball in the back of the net. It doesn't work like that. Right, so that's counterplay done. Now let's talk about switch play. Now, switch play can be done in two different ways. Obviously, let's say, let's just push up a little bit here. So we're in the attacking third now. We're looking to... You know, your team's looking to uh, press the opposition, you know, put a ball in the back of the net, put the pressure on them. So how switch play would work would be, let's say the ball is occupied by the right centre back here. Now, if the right centre back wants to press maybe the ball out wide, give it to the right wing. But perhaps the way that this team is set up, they might have a three man in the vicinity here. So it will be a two on three lesser numbers. What the player can do, if they have it in them, if they are a Trent Alexander-esque or a Carl Walker-esque, then by all means, switch the ball long from here to here, if possible. So we've got the ball going from here to the left wing, if possible, because what will happen if this is out wide, hopefully their centre-backs will look to uh, sort of converge downwards and look to block this out, because then if their left-back goes here, uh, their centre-backs might look to come across and the right-back look to come across, leaving this player um, unoccupied. And if that does happen, your team needs to have the understanding with each other that they can identify that this area here won't work. So perhaps this winger could then just go wide himself, even though, like I said earlier, I wouldn't want it double wide. But given the situation, if nothing can come from this side, identify it, go wider so that way... It takes the pressure off when you receive that ball, because when the ball's traveling in, if they've identified it and you were more narrow, he could potentially be able to maneuver around, put the pressure on early. But the further away you are, 
the more distance they have to cover to get to you and the more time it gives you to receive that ball, look for a passing option. Maybe your left centre-back's coming in, you can pass to him. The DM and the cam here, you can go one, two in, half space, and then everybody kind of, you know, tucks around here. Striker goes in, he's gone half space, he's come here. So the ball's travel now from here, it's gone here, here and here, or even from here to here to here. However you want to do it, he can push up as well. So that way, if a ball can't go in this way, it can come back, go down, go across, come back, go in the back of the net here. So that's sort of one way to do switch play. And a second, a second way to do switch play is just through a simple passing manoeuvre from the back line, from one area to the other area. So again, ball's occupied by the right centre back here. Simply, if this play is wide, this play is going to be narrow now and we're going to start tucking down. If the opposition again has covered this, so now we want to exchange from the other side. Look, it's very simple. We can go either a pass here to a pass maybe all the way around from here, a pass from here to here to a cross. And when this happens, when this pass is made from here to here, go wider, then you can drop in to fill that space and you can go wide here. So when he's got the ball, if it goes wide here, it can go across here then this cam can look to start running into that half space there to receive the ball. Then again, the same thing. Everybody shifts around, gets into those positions. Like we say, striker goes in there. He goes in there. He occupies the back. He can come hold this area. And then we can have somebody here as well. And then even from there, then this person can look to come down if they need to. So that's how you can also switch play through more of a gradual build up rather than just a one pass over there. But either way is perfectly fine. It really just depends on how your team is comfortable doing it. If for some reason their backline, if they're occupying the player there still, so it's really spread, you know, then you might want to maybe do a bit of a build up, but then you might want to build up and go narrow then because their backline is spread. So you want to go narrow. So really look at how the opposition are sort of reacting to you. If you're wide and they send their fullbacks wide, hit them down the middle. If you're wide and they're narrow, hit them wide if they converge to the side that you're trying to play switch the ball over it's very simple so guys that's how we talk about attacking plays those are just a few ideas like i said game scenarios things are really different um really just kind of make them react to you and make them play your game but these are just base ideas that i think you should all follow they should be things that you're trying to implement in the game just psychologically get into the idea of Half space, dangerous area. Once you're in the half space, I think the main thing you want to do is have that set up. Have the striker near the six yard. Have that if we're coming from this side, let's say, yeah. So if we're coming from this side here, remember, you want maybe the cam to go into the half space. You want the other winger to be in that half space. The other cam to either just be, um, uh, sorry, uh, the other cam to come in and occupy the penalty area just behind the striker and then the CDM to just occupy the outside here. And then... You know, or if we are in a position where the wide man has managed to dribble, get as close to the byline as possible, because that way it makes it easier for you to send the ball into the striker here. But the exact same thing, you would want your cam this time, you'd want your um, other cam here, and then this cam here. So it's again, you can go wide here, you can go here, and then from here to here to there, there to there, there, there. Very simple. Um, easier said than done, don't get me wrong, easier said than done. But once you start implementing this in game after game after game, It'll become second nature for the team. If everybody's set up, then it's great for you because there's so many options. And guys, that's attacking plays. Look forward to the next video. Take care.